Hi guys, this is Jenny from Gunter Creative. I wanted to show you today a new book that I made and some things that I did wrong and how I fixed them. Uh, first of all, I decided I wanted to put some pockets. So all I did was I folded my paper up from the bottom. Of course, it had to be about three inches bigger. This is a six by nine book. So I folded it up from the bottom and burnished it there so it would be a tight fold and then folded it in half. Now on the left there is where the binding will be so nothing should be able to escape those pockets. So I also had about 20 sheets of the same paper in the size of my book and then I started to punch the holes and realized that I needed to adjust my hole punch. So here I am. I have a little pencil line there that I wanted to line up my cover with. So I'm just lining up the three holes with my cover. Here, punching the holes a few sheets at a time. Now I'm going to cut the little inserts that I want to make to make my spine thicker so that when scrapbook items or photographs are added to the book, um, the book body won't be thicker than the spine. got all my pages ready and I'm going to measure for how thick I need to cut the leather on the spine. You can go look at my very first video called Living Hinge Books that will show you in more detail how to measure for the spine. This is just a real fast look at me doing it for this particular book. And it's two and a half inches. So next I uh, cut the leather and I added it to the front. Again, you can watch that first video to see how I did that. And here I am putting in every other page will be a full page and then one of those filler strips. And this is the first mistake I made. I thought I could use a 5 8 five eighths inch Chicago screws and just make up the difference with the screw itself. So I, I feel like I'm doing pretty good here. Putting in all my screws. I thought they were meeting up with the post by just cramming them in there through the pages. And then I pick it up and I realize they're not attached at all. Those posts were just falling out. Great. <laughs> so I pull them out and go find my three quarter inch screws. So right here I'm looking at it and thinking, why did that not work? And I try to see how big it is and sure enough, that book is just too thick for five eighth inch screws. So here I'm with my three quarter inch screws and I have to arrange the book on there again and it looks like my post fell out again. <laughs> so the best way to do it really is to put your three posts through your cover and all your pages on and make sure your posts are at least long enough to go through all of your pages to keep them nice and even and then if your posts don't exactly go through your cover and your leather then your screw can make up the difference for that. So another mistake that was made on this one was that little knife above the pizza there didn't really engrave. I think the lines were too thin. Um, I ended up having this art I bought from Adobe Stock 
and it was um, vector art. It was all an illustrator, um, but the thing would not upload to the Glowforge user interface. It was just too detailed, too much. So I ended up exporting it in Illustrator as a ping file, and it came into the Glowforge interface just fine. Um, but that little knife didn't um, engrave very well, so I used my wood burner to make it just a little bit darker. Um, so with this book, I'm going to include some photo corners so that the recipient can add pictures or scrapbook items, and then she can put things in the back in these little pockets too. And here I'm realizing that the paper I chose was really too thick for this kind of book. Um, so I took it back apart and decided to score the pages. And there are specialized scoring tools you can buy, but I've always found I just like scoring with um, the pointy end of my bone folder. It doesn't tear the paper, it just makes a score line so it's easier to fold. And you can see on these pages that I've tried to bend them in the book and they've just kind of made a mess of where they bend. So that's why I decided I needed to add a score line. Um, one of the advantages of this type of book is you can put it together and if there's something that you, you know is off, if you want to take some of the pages out if it's too thick or score the pages like I'm doing here or add some decorative paper at the front and the back, um, they're very easy to take apart. Some other books are not very easy to take apart and um, fix mistakes. You should never be afraid to spend a little bit more time on your projects and make it just right. On those pockets I ended up scoring the front and the back and I did take some pages out because that's another thing when your paper is too thick if you don't have so many pages then um, you won't have such a, such a problem with them bending when you get towards the back of the book. So I'm putting it together again. I'm also realizing when I put it together this time that I didn't really punch my holes, all of them, very evenly. So I did turn the pages and the inserts a little bit as I was putting it in to make sure that everything lined up good. And it turns better with the scoring. Happy bookmaking!